Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have giant tube worms. These guys were totally unknown to scientists until the discovery of the hydrothermal vents that we talked about last time. Like the vent crabs, these giant tube worms also live off of and thrive in these extreme areas. These giant tube worms feed off of the tiny bacteria that get their energy from the chemicals coming from the vent water. These giant tube worms grow to be around 8 feet or over 2 meters, and they have no mouth or digestive tract. Instead, they rely on those bacteria bacteria we just talked about to live inside of them for their food. Like a wonderful symbiotic relationship. These guys can best be spotted by their bright red plume, which is used for exchanging compounds with the seawater such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. I could talk about these guys for forever because there's so many interesting facts about them, but I'll end off with just one more, and that is that the outer shell of these worms is made up of a natural substance called chitin, which is also the main component of the exoskeletons of crabs, lobsters, and shrimps. Okay, one more quickly, but I swear it's the last one. These two worms also have no eyes, but they can sense movements and vibrations, and they will retreat into their protective tubes when they feel threatened. Okay. Now I'm actually done. In our number 9 spot today we have the frogfish. Frogfish are weird looking creatures, but they are also incredible at disguising themselves. They're fairly sedentary fish and they love to find their home on the sea floor at depths of around 1,000 feet or 300 meters. They range from a few inches to a foot in length and their colors vary greatly, which is how they are able to blend in with their surroundings so easily. They actually have the ability to change their color if their environment changes, with the process taking somewhere from a few days to a few weeks. While they can glide through the water, they sometimes also use their fins to basically walk along the sea floor. They feed off of things like other fish and invertebrates, and on their heads they have a special modified fin that kind of resembles a fishing rod with bait on it, which they use to lure in their prey. Little does the unsuspecting prey fish know, while it thinks it's about to get a meal, it's about to become the frogfish's meal. Frogfish are able to eat prey that is much larger than themselves as they have the ability to expand their mouth cavity to 12 times its resting size, which is insane. In our number 8 spot today we have the deep sea lizard fish. Deep sea lizard fish are a small family of deep water fish who are related to the telescope fish. These guys have flat heads and curved barbed teeth and they grow up to 78 centimeters or 31 inches in length, which makes them a pretty moderately sized fish. They prefer to stay at depths of 1,600 meters or 5,200 feet, and they are actually one of the world's deepest living apex predators. These lizard fish are known to eat anything that comes their way, including other fish of their own kind. Despite the lack of light in the depths of the ocean, these guys have large eyes and pupils, and their vision is actually really important for their prey detection, as their well developed eyes allow them to see any residual or bioluminescent light. Not a lot is known about their reproduction habits, but one thing that is known is that the deep sea lizard fish have both male and female reproductive organs, which is thought to be an adaptation to low population density. In our number 7 spot today we have the zombie worm. These worms were first discovered in 2002 where they were living in the bones of the carcass of a dead whale nearly 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters deep in the ocean. The reason these guys have the common name zombie worm is because of the fact that their main food source is those same bones that they were first found living in. These guys love to eat bones, but in their own special way because of the fact that they don't have mouths or stomachs. Instead, they secrete an acid from their skin that dissolves the bones, which frees up the fat and proteins that are trapped inside. The worms then have their symbiotic bacteria that lives inside of them digest the fat and the protein. Here's the thing though, we actually don't know how the nutrients from the bacteria get to the worm. They either digest the bacteria somehow, or there is some sort of process where the nutrients get transferred. While when they were first found, they were chowing down on whale bones, zombie worms are happy to eat any kind of bones that they can come across, and they've actually been observed making a meal out of non-aquatic animal bones that somehow ended up in the deep sea. In our number 6 spot today, we have the barrel eye. This guy is one weird looking fish, man. The barrel eye fish is also known as the spook fish, and they of course get their names due to their appearance. These fish are relatively small and they are best known for their extremely unusual transparent fluid filled heads. When these fish were first discovered, there were so many questions surrounding them. At first scientists thought that their eyes were fixed in place, but after some further research it was able to be determined that they are able to rotate both up and forward. The fish is usually found motionless, just hanging out in the depths of around 600 to 800 meters or 2000 to 2000 
1,600 feet in the ocean. This fish has been known for quite some time, with its first discovery coming in 1939, but it wasn't until 2004 that a photograph of a live one was ever captured for the world to see how unique these guys really are. There also used to be many drawings of these guys, but never with their transparent head because of the fact that it gets destroyed when the fish is brought up from the deep sea. So, not that I think anyone is going to go diving in the Mariana Trench anytime soon, but if you do, don't bring these guys up from their home. They're happy down there with their heads fully intact. In our number 5 spot today we have the ghost fish. This little ghost fish was caught on camera in 2016 as it was casually swimming along a ridge around 8,202 feet or 2,500 meters deep in the ocean. The fish is around 10 centimeters long and has translucent, scaleless skin and the creepiest, colorless eyes on any fish I've ever seen. Here's the craziest thing about this whole ordeal though. This was the first time a live fish from its family has ever been seen before. This little fish swimming along minding his own business has absolutely no idea that he was a huge discovery for the human scientists on land. There is still so much that is left a mystery about these guys, but any kind of new discovery is most definitely always a step in the right direction. In our number 4 spot today we have the aluminum plated amphipods. These guys are found not only in the Mariana Trench, but also in the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the trench. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate, but the extreme environment in these guys habitats make their shells basically just dissolve. They of course can't just be walking around naked and shellless, so what do they do? They adapt in order to preserve their shells. After collecting some of these guys from the deepest parts of the ocean, scientists were able to realize that their exoskeleton contained aluminum on the surface, which then led to the question, how did these guys find metal since it is pretty sparse in seawater? Well, as it turns out, these guys use sugar based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the seafloor that it ends up ingesting while devouring the plant debris that floats down from the surface. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is a compound that we as humans use, for, like protecting our upset stomach from stomach acid. This gel then coats their shells and acts as a type of of chemical protection so as to keep the calcium carbonate exoskeleton from dissolving. I don't know guys, I just think that's one of the coolest things that I've ever heard a shrimp do. This is the first known amphipod to do something like this and these guys are now an important part of researching how maybe one day we can find an environmentally friendly way to produce aluminum. In our number 3 spot today we have basket stars. Basket stars are like the Mariana Trench cousin of the starfish and when you see them you can totally understand why. These guys have this same main kind of disc that you see on a starfish, but rather than five stiff arms, these guys have five long, slender, flexible arms that all branch out from themselves repeatedly to form even more little tiny arms, with the last branch usually ending up curled. There is no real rhyme or reason for the shapes of basket stars, as it just depends on how they grow. So while some look beautiful and almost like a webbing of lace, there are some that look absolutely chaotic. You know what they say? No two basket stars are the same. I don't think anyone has ever said that, but we're gonna start. Basket stars are able to navigate around the seafloor by wiggling their arms around, and they also have the ability to curl into a ball when they're feeling threatened by predators. They also do eat, as they have a mouth located on the underside of their disc, and they prefer to eat things like krill, small crustaceans, and zooplankton. In our number two spot today, we have giant tube worms. These guys were totally unknown to scientists until the discovery of the hydrothermal vents because these giant tube worms live off of and thrive in these extreme areas. These giant tube worms feed off of the tiny bacteria that get their energy from the chemicals coming from the vent water. These giant tube worms grow to be around 8 feet or over 2 meters and they have no mouth or digestive tract. Instead, they rely on those bacteria we talked about to live inside of them for their food, like a wonderful symbiotic relationship. These guys can best be spotted by their bright red plume, which is used for exchanging compounds with the seawater, such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. I could talk about these guys for forever, because there's so many interesting facts about them, but I'll end off with just one more, and that is that the outer shell of these worms is made up of a natural substance called chitin, which is also the main component component in the exoskeletons of crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. One more quickly, but I swear, it's the last one. These tube worms also have no eyes, but they can sense movements and vibrations, and they will retreat into their protective tubes when they feel threatened. Okay, 
Now I'm actually done. In our number one spot today, we have the predatory tuna kit, one of my favorite creatures to ever exist. They're so weird. These guys are basically like the Venus flytraps of the deep sea. These invertebrates make their home anchored along the deep sea canyon walls and seafloor as they wait for their meals to drift on by. Like the flytrap, when they catch a piece of their prey, their mouths will snap shut until they are finished digesting their meal. These guys start off life looking kind of like tadpoles and they swim around until they find a place to land, which they do upside down by secreting an adhesive to keep them in place. From here, they undergo a metamorphosis and have an incredibly large change. Despite having to worry about its predators, these guys are also very picky about where they live. They need to make sure the chemicals in the water as well as the temperature of the water are just right, and it's also imperative that they stay in place once they find their spot. If they're removed from the canyon wall, they unfortunately will die. The predatory tunicate may seem a little weird. But one cool thing is that they have been found to be useful in the medical world, and they may even have the potential to help with conditions such as melanoma and leukemia, which is absolutely incredible. Starting off this list on our number 10 spot, we have gigantic amphipods. Amphipods are shrimp-like creatures that are usually less than 10 millimeters or 0.4 inches long. That all changed when these deep sea dwelling amphipods were located, however, with their massive selves measuring around 28 centimeters long or 11 inches, with the largest one ever found coming in at an insane 33 centimeters or 13 inches long. Like imagine a shrimp the size of your forearm. These guys are basically the largest amphipods ever recorded, and they've only been found at some of the greatest depths of our oceans. The first specimens of this species were collected at the end of the 19th century, and they are usually found in abyssal plains in both the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, but of course, considering what we are here talking about today, they are also found in the Mariana Trench. Other than their crazy size difference, these guys are a lot like other amphipods, so it's unclear exactly why they are so large. These guys are basically like the shack of the amphipod world. In our number 9 spot today we have the fan fin sea devil. These guys are a type of anglerfish which we talked about in part 1, but these guys truly need their own moment to shine. They have a bioluminescent lure which they use to both attract their prey as well as keep themselves from becoming the prey. These fish have little hairy spikes all over their body which are used as sensors to help the fish balance as well as helping the fish check the water surrounding it. Kind of like the whiskers on a cat, but much less adorable and cuddly. These guys, their hairy spikes and their sharp teeth are absolutely terrifying to look at, but the good news is that they're relatively quite small. The females of this species are 6 to 8 inches long, and the males are even smaller, usually only measuring about half an inch in length. In our number 8 spot today, we have the lanternfish. These guys get their name from their bioluminescent abilities as they have tiny organs called photophores located on their head, underside, and tail. Like many other bioluminescent sea creatures, they use their light to attract their prey, but it is also thought that the lanternfish might use their light to also signal other lanternfish during mating. Apparently lanternfish are the most common of all deep sea fish and they play an important role as the prey for other larger deep sea fish. One thing that these fish do, which is unlike any other on this list, is that while during the day they are in the deepest depths of the ocean, during the night they prefer to swim a little closer to the surface in order to feed. It is thought that they do this to follow the path of plankton, which is their main food source. It is also thought that this migration pattern might help them avoid becoming lunch to squid and penguins, which are their main predators. Another interesting thing about them is that different species of lanternfish have been known to almost layer themselves at different depths, which is thought to possibly help reduce competition between species. In our number 7 spot today, we have the ghost shark. These guys are also commonly referred to as ratfish or spookfish, and their closest living relatives are sharks and rays, but their last common ancestor lived with them around 400 million years ago. Ghost fish were once abundant and diverse, but throughout the years that has changed greatly, and they are now mostly confined to deep water. They prefer to live around 2,600 meters or 8,500 feet deep, and they have elongated bodies with bulky heads. They grow to be around 150 centimeters or 4.9 feet, and their skeletons are made of 
cartilage. They don't have scales and instead have smooth skin, and they range in color from black to a sort of brownish gray color. These guys use electroreception to find their prey, which is the ability to perceive natural electric stimuli, and they also have a venomous spine in front of their dorsal fins, which acts as a form of protection for them. In our number six spot today, we have the long tail red snapper. These fish feature a beautiful red color, and they also have very large eyes, which help it make its home in the deep sea. These guys can grow to be three feet or 0.9 meters long and 30 pounds. They have a forked tail that grows larger as the fish matures, and sometimes the tips of the tails have a black or white color on the ends. It takes about four years for these guys to reach maturity, which is relatively long for the fish world. There are a few species of this kind of fish, and they can be found in many areas of our oceans, and they are considered a delicacy in some places and cultures. It probably isn't the Mariana Trench variety that people are eating, however, as that would be quite a costly and difficult meal to achieve. In our number five spot today, we have acorn worms. There are a few species of acorn worms, but one in particular finds its home in the deepest points of our seas. These acorn worms can grow up to three feet or just under a meter in length, and they often have brightly colored bodies. They have cilia on their underside, which are used to glide over the ocean floor, albeit slowly as they travel at about three inches per hour. As they move along, they suck the waste from the ocean floor into their gut, and they also constantly leave a trail of feces behind them, which is a nice gross fact for you. When they are ready to move to a new feeding location, they empty their gut, and then they just drift over the bottom, and they do this with the help of an excreted balloon of mucus. So this whole point is just a double whammy of grossness. They can usually be found at depths of around 1,500 to 3,700 meters or 4,900 to 12,100 feet. In our number four spot today, we have basket stars. Basket stars belong to the same phylum as starfish, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. They resemble starfish, but they have five long, slender, and flexible arms. Each one of the five arms also branches out itself repeatedly, with each branch getting thinner, which makes the final branch quite thin and usually curled at the end. The central disc of the basket star where all of the arms come off of is very distinct. While some basket stars have neatly placed arms that look amazing and beautiful, some basket stars look pretty wild and strange. Basket stars move by wiggling their arms around, and they have the ability to curl into a ball when they feel threatened. They also use their arms to catch their prey as they position themselves in the current of the water. They feed on things like krill, small crustaceans, and zooplankton. Surprisingly, these guys do have a mouth, which is located on the bottom side of their disc. In our number three spot today, we have predatory tunicate. These guys are basically like the Venus flytraps of the deep sea. These invertebrates make their home anchored along the deep sea canyon walls and sea floor as they wait for their meals to drift on by. Like the flytrap, when they catch a piece of prey, their mouth will snap shut until they are finished digesting their meal. These guys start off life looking kind of like tadpoles, and then they swim around until they find a place to land, which they do upside down by secreting an adhesive to keep them in place. From here, they undergo a metamorphosis and have an incredibly large change. Despite having to worry about its predators, these guys are also very picky about where they live. They need to make sure the chemicals in the water as well as the temperature of the water are just right, and it's also imperative that they stay in place once they find their spot. If they're removed from the canyon wall, they unfortunately will die. The predatory tunicate may seem a little weird, but one cool thing is that they have been found to be useful in the medical world, and they may even have the potential to help with conditions such as melanoma and leukemia, which is absolutely incredible. In our number two spot today, we have the deep sea hermit crab. Okay, many of us have seen or heard of a hermit crab before, so at a first thought, they aren't the weirdest thing out there. But as it turns out, the deep sea variety is quite interesting. Instead of these guys carrying around empty gastropod shells like the hermit crabs we are used to, these guys instead carry around sea anemones, and it is one of the weirdest looking things I have ever seen. It looks like these crabs are missing a pair of legs, but instead the legs have actually been adapted to hold the anemone in place. I don't know about you guys, but I really think this one looks like some sort of disgusting sea spider that I hope just stays at the deepest depths of the Mariana Trench. No offense to the crab, it's just not my cup of tea. In the number one spot today, we have the Daikoku Seamount. This seamount is located in the Mariana Arc, about 325 meters or 1,060 feet below sea level, 
and it was found to be hydrothermally active in 2003. In 2014, it was discovered that the submarine volcano was either actively erupting or had been very recently. Along with these discoveries came the realization that this seamount also features a pool of liquid sulfur that was covered in some sort of black coating. This little sulfur cauldron is approximately 4.5 by 3 meters large and is 420 meters deep. There are rising gases like carbon dioxide and hydrogen that are coming out of the pool and they are moving that black crust that sits on top. The rising gases appear like smoke but underwater which is super cool. The really cool thing about this little sulfur lake is that it is almost an anomaly on earth and one of the few other sulfur lakes that are known is actually located on Jupiter's moon Io. While there have been a few other liquid sulfur lakes found on earth, the one located near this seamount is the most impressive one we have ever found on our planet. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have spoonworms. Spoonworms are a strange looking little creature that can be found in many areas of the ocean and of course even in the Mariana Trench. These guys are basically just plump unsegmented worms that find their homes in the burrows on the seabed. Different members of this animal family can live at different temperatures but most of the deep sea variety live deeper than 3,000 meters where the water is icy cold. The deep sea spoonworms often see the females growing much larger than the males and in most instances the males end up living inside or at least on the females. I'm not entirely sure of the logistics of that but it does sound awful. In these species their stomachs are much longer than their bodies so their gut ends up folded and coiled inside of them which I guess isn't unsimilar to human intestines. In our number 9 spot today we have volcanic glass. Did you know that there are volcanoes underwater even in the deep sea? Right near the Mariana Trench in 2015, scientists found evidence of what was the deepest ever known volcanic eruption. They didn't catch the actual eruption, but they knew it had happened because of the volcanic glass they found 3 miles or 4,800 meters below the sea. This discovery was huge because it is not often that we find deep sea volcanic eruptions, but it was the first time scientists had found one that had erupted very recently. The volcanic glass is created because of the hot magma coming into contact with the icy cold waters, which cools it down quickly. This discovery helped scientists understand what happens when an eruption occurs underwater, such as how some quick moving creatures find their home in the aftermath almost immediately. It is said that around 80% of the world's volcanic eruptions occur under the water, and it's still something we know so little about, so this discovery gave us an incredibly important look at what happens afterwards. In our number 8 spot today we have the sea cucumber. Sea cucumbers are creatures that can be found all over the oceans on our earth, even in the most extreme environments such as the Mariana Trench. These guys have many different appearances but they all look somewhat like a giant worm or some kind of spiky slimy cucumber. They're often called the vacuum cleaners of the ocean as they mainly feed on tiny particles of algae or microscopic marine animals and they play a vital role in recycling marine nutrients. They have a bunch of little tentacles that they use to eat and they can often be found on or close to the sea floor. There are a few species of sea cucumbers that can swim, but not all of them do. In some species, their tentacles are even able to secrete a mucus net that can be used to trap small planktonic organisms. One really crazy thing about some kinds of sea cucumbers is that they can expel their internal organs when threatened. This would seem like a huge problem, but sea cucumbers can regenerate their organs quite quickly after. They also don't have a brain, which I felt like was important to include. I guess maybe if we take our brains out, then can we regenerate our own Organs? Uh, I'm just joking, obviously. In our number seven spot today, we have Foraminifera. These guys are giant single celled organisms that are kind of like oversized amoebas, and they can be found in the sediment on seabeds throughout the world. In 1995, however, when Japanese researchers were able to collect samples of sediment located in the Mariana Trench, they found 432 living ones. I know I made these guys sound really large before, but I just mean large in terms of the single cell organism world, they're still super tiny, and they're usually found with a hard outer shell, but not the ones found in the trench. 
These guys have basically found a way to adapt by building their own shells from proteins, organic polymers, and even sand. The ones most commonly found in the Mariana Trench are called xenophyophores, and these guys use the fact that grains of sand are mostly made out of silicon dioxide, which is the main constituent of glass, to their advantage. They basically glue sand from ocean sediments, cast off shells, and microbial skeletons to make their own kind of pressure proof shells. So I guess they're the engineers of the deep sea? In our number six spot today, we have the football fish. Just another member of the angler fish family, these guys, of course, get their name from their football like shape. The females of this species are the ones who have the bioluminescent lantern on their heads, which lure in their prey for a tasty little snack. Here's where things get really different though. As their little lantern on their heads is swaying back and forth, luring in an unsuspecting fish, once their prey gets close enough, the football fish will then shoot out a bioluminescent liquid. This liquid acts to momentarily blind their prey, which is when the football fish grabs their prey and swallows them whole with their large mouths. That is definitely quite the hunting technique. These guys are similar to other angler fish with the females being larger than the males, and they also have a bit of a different shape. In terms of mating, because the depths of the ocean are so dark, the males will bite onto the females until their skin grows together, which is so gross sounding. From here, he is able to fertilize the eggs to produce more little weird looking football fishies. In our number five spot today, we have the benthocodon. We have all seen a jellyfish before, but these deep sea dwellers are unlike any of the ones we usually find. Firstly, they prefer depths of around 2,500 feet or 762 meters, usually right on the sea floor. These guys are actually quite small and compact with their bell usually measuring just two to three centimeters in diameter. Despite their small size, however, they still have around 1,500 little wispy tentacles that help propel them through the icy cold depths. These jellies like to chow down on small crustaceans and tiny unicellular organisms, but sometimes their meals are bioluminescent, which is what has led to one of their other unique features on these jellies. This unique feature would be the red color that can be found in part of their bell. Most jellyfish we know of are transparent, and if this was the case for these ones, their bioluminescent meals would be a dead giveaway for the larger hungry predators lurking around the deep sea. This is why the bit of red that they have in their bell is so important to their survival as it acts as a cover for this blue glow so that they can continue on their merry way throughout the dark depths of the ocean. In our number four spot today, we have the tripod fish. When you see these guys, their name totally makes a lot of sense. These deep sea fish have elongated fin rays in the tail as well as two in the pelvic fins, which they use to prop themselves up and just basically stand there like their own little built in tripod. These little fin rays almost appear as antenna-like, and usually while these fish are standing in one spot, they can be seen facing upstream. They don't appear to have any kind of special visual adaptations to help them find food in their low light environment, but that's okay because these guys can find their prey without even seeing it. When these guys are standing on their little tripod, they are also at the perfect height to catch shrimp, tiny fish, and small crustaceans that are swimming by. If the catch isn't as simple as the current bringing the prey right into their mouths, the tripod fish is able to sense the prey with their pectoral fins, which kind of act like hands. Once they feel the prey and realize it's edible, they can use these fins to just knock their meal right into their mouths. This is all why they like to face the current, just to make getting their next meal a little easier. And in our number three spot today, we have the owl fish. These creepy looking guys are also often referred to as stout black smelt, as they are a species of deep sea smelt, but their owl fish name comes from their extremely large eyes in relation to their body. These eyes are able to capture even the faintest glimmer of light, which isn't the most common occurrence in the deep dark depths of the Mariana Trench, but this is what helps them spot and capture their prey, which are usually small crustaceans and jellies. There truly isn't a ton of interesting information I can find out about these guys other than their huge eyes, but I did find this cool video of one fighting with a black eyed squid, so here's a little clip of that. The fish has a few tricks up its sleeve as well. 
Owlfish have a very quick escape response, and with a flick of their tails, they can dart out of reach of a striking squid. In our number two spot today, we have the telescope octopus. There has been a kind of octopus on every part of this list, so we have got to keep the tradition alive and talk about the weird but interesting telescope octopus. These guys got their name for their unique protruding eyes, which haven't been seen in any other kind of octopus ever before. The difference in their eyes allows them to have better peripheral vision so as to see both their prey and their predators better. Their eyes also rotate, which I'm sure is super helpful to them, but just seems like something I wish I didn't know. These guys don't really hang out on the ocean floor like many other octopuses do, and instead they prefer to just float or dangle in the deepest currents of the ocean. Most octopuses also tend to swim horizontally, but not this guy. He likes to stay vertical, and it's unclear why, but it could perhaps be to make it harder for predators to see its shape. The telescope octopus has nearly transparent skin and in between each of the eight tentacles there's a delicate webbing that fully makes it look like some kind of ghost. In our number one spot today we have aluminum plated amphipods. Okay, so we talked about the ginormous amphipods before, but now we have another, smaller, but equally as cool kind. These guys are found not only in the Mariana Trench, but in the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the trench. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate, but the extreme environment in these guys' habitat make their shells basically just dissolve. They of course can't just be walking around naked and shellless, so what do they do? They adapt in order to preserve their shells. After collecting some of these guys from the deepest part of the ocean, scientists were able to realize that their exoskeleton contained aluminum on the surface, which then led to the question, how did these guys find the metal since it's so sparse in seawater? Well, as it turns out, these guys use sugar-based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the seafloor that it ends up ingesting while devouring the plant debris that floats down from the surface. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is a compound that we as humans use for things like protecting our upset stomachs from stomach acid. This gel then coats their shell and acts as a type of chemical protection so as to keep the calcium carbonate exoskeleton from dissolving. I don't know guys, I just think that's one of the coolest things I've ever heard a shrimp do. This is the first known amphipod to do something like this and these guys are now an important part of researching how maybe one day we can find an environmentally friendly way to produce aluminum. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have a plastic bag. It is unfortunately no surprise that on one of the deepest dives we as humans have ever been able to accomplish along with all of the amazing new creatures and never been explored places, there would be none other than a plastic bag. In 2019, Victor Vescovo took a dive into the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, which is an unbelievable feat and not an easy task, and he was rewarded by being reminded of human trash. Despite that little finding, Victor broke the record for deepest dive, which is of course amazing for scientific advancements and research. Every time someone manages to do these things that once seemed impossible, we get closer to revealing more of our ocean's mysteries that lay at the deepest points on Earth, which is very, very cool. While it would be amazing if the dives weren't plagued with plastic pollution, at least they were able to also discover a bunch of new crustaceans and give us all a little look into what life looks like in the Mariana Trench. At number nine, we have the Dumbo Octopus. It's an octopus whose favorite Disney movie is Dumbo. <laughs> just kidding, that would just be weird. Almost as weird as the real Dumbo Octopus. Although, that is how it got its name, because it looks like Dumbo. Anyway, 9,800 meters below the surface and found deep in the Marianas Trench, you can find these dopey, kinda cute looking creatures. These creatures go from eight to 12 inches and swim using their ears. Seems cute and friendly enough, right? Well, surprising for all of us, the Dumbo octopus is actually a predator and can swallow its meals all in one gulp. These kind of octopi also fall under the category of umbrella octopuses because they have webbed tentacles, giving them an umbrella-like shape. Almost like a starfish, but with a massive balloon on its head. Luckily, we're all too big for this dopey looking octopus to feed on us, so if you want to go for a swim and see some, you don't have to worry about them eating you. But I can't guarantee that the other deep sea creatures won't be as small. In our number eight spot today, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. 
These combs help the jelly move through the water like boat oars, and while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. I'm saying the word tentacles. <laughs> these tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on today. In our number seven spot today, we have rat tails. These fish are usually fairly large, and while most species belonging to this family are deep sea fish, there's one specific species that are found in the Mariana Trench. These fish have larger heads and eyes, but then their body tapers out into a thin tail fin, which is how they got their common name. Rat tails are one of the most common deep water fish, and they like to snack on things like smaller fish, some kinds of crustaceans, and even sometimes lantern fish. These fish are great scavengers which is an important part of the deep sea ecosystem. When these fish are young, they tend to stay in more shallow water, but as they grow older, they migrate further into the icy cold depths of the sea. In our number six spot today, we have barophilic bacteria. This bacteria is characterized by its preference for an environment with pressure greater than our atmospheric pressure, which of course makes the trench a perfect candidate for a home. These bacteria have been isolated from deep sea environments and found to grow rapidly at low temperatures and high pressures. This low temperature, high pressure combo that is found in the deep sea environment is usually the cause for the decrease of the fluidity of lipids, as well as the depression of the function of biological membranes. But this doesn't happen in this bacteria, which has led to the theory that they must have some sort of mechanism that allows their lipids to adapt to their extreme environment. Aside from their superpower, these bacteria help to support life by being a source of carbon for the deep sea animals that end up ingesting them. In our number five spot today, we have immense pressure. In every part of this video series, I have talked about the extreme environment that is the Mariana Trench and just how much pressure exists down there, but I haven't taken the time to really dive into just how much pressure is down there. So we're gonna do that now. The deeper you go into the ocean, the more pressure you'd feel. Close to the surface of the ocean, we're sitting at a base of one atmospheric pressure, but when you go just 10 meters deep, that number already doubles. Considering the Mariana Trench is 11,000 meters deep, this is obviously going to increase greatly. The pressure causes the air in your body to compress, and the deeper you go, the more dense the water becomes. While the concept of the increasing pressure is easy to understand, Understand, it truly is really hard to conceptualize how this change happens and just how deep this trench really is. One atmospheric pressure is 1.01325 bars, which is the unit used to measure pressure. So like I mentioned before, this is where we are sitting when close to the surface of the ocean, but in the depths of the Mariana Trench, that number skyrockets to 1,086 bars, which apparently would be the equivalent of 100 elephants standing on you. So it's suddenly making a lot more sense as to why people don't journey down to the Challenger Deep very often. In our number four spot today, we have arrowtooth eels. The arrowtooth eels that reside in the Mariana Trench are a species that not much is known about. These eels range somewhere from 23 to 160 centimeters or 9.1 to 63 inches in length. They're bottom dwelling fish and can be found in waters around 3,700 meters or 12,000 and 100 feet deep. They can be told apart from other eels in their early stages because of their telescopic eyes during the larva stage. These guys like to feed on the scraps left over from other larger fish meals as well as invertebrates, but they have also been known to be partly parasitic as they sometimes burrow into the flesh of other fish. Here's a little clip of one swimming past a camera that is located around 11,000 meters deep in the sea. 
number three spot today, we have the hydrothermal vents. The Mariana Trench is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is a tectonically active region where plates are colliding and causing subduction, which is how the trench itself was formed. Through this tectonic activity, as seawater seeps downwards through the oceanic crust, it gets really hot and becomes very rich in chemicals. This leads to the water becoming so buoyant that it comes back out of the surface of the sea floor, and this is what is called a hydrothermal vent. The water coming out of the vent is that same super hot, super chemically rich water, and it is an extremely important part of underwater ecosystems. The water from the vent is highly acidic and hot, while the water in the depths of the ocean is slightly basic and freezing cold. There are many different smaller species who come to the vent areas because of the chemicals in the water, as well as the heat, which helps certain types of food sources grow, which they then want to consume. This then leads to it being a feeding hotspot as larger predators can also come to the vent to feed on the other smaller organisms that are already in the feeding area. There are usually a high amount of animals found in the area of a hydrothermal vent, but not a wide variety of different animals as the temperature extreme is not suited for everyone in the deep sea. In our number two spot today, we have vent crabs. Okay, so to piggyback off of the last point, we have a creature that loves the hydrothermal vents, and that is the aptly named vent crab. These white crabs are actually endemic to hydrothermal vents, and they were first described in 1980. The crabs in this family are usually blind and abundant. In fact, their numbers are so vast that scientists often use the clusters of them to help find the location of the hydrothermal vents. The eyes of vent crabs change throughout their life, which helps them adapt to their environment. Young vent crabs usually have eyes that would be comparable to their shallow water companions, but upon metamorphosis, their eyes degenerate and become naked retinas. Hydrothermal vents produce light in the infrared wavelengths, and this change in the vent crab's eyes actually allows them to better see this light, although it causes them to not be able to see most other things. It's like a similar concept to night vision goggles. So basically, vent crabs have night vision, I guess? It is so interesting to see and learn about how these deep sea creatures adapt to their individual environments and circumstances. Vent crabs often eat tiny organisms and bacteria, which is another reason they thrive near the vents. In our number one spot today, we have giant isopods. Before I dive into this number one point, make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. It really helps us out. Despite their appearance, these guys are neither aliens or pill bugs and are just another one of those strange and weirdly large deep sea creatures. These rather large crustaceans can reach lengths of around 15 inches, and while that's not the biggest deep sea creature out there, that's still pretty insane for the isopod world. These guys get their size from what is known as deep sea gigantism, which is an evolutionary tendency for deep sea creatures to grow larger than their shallow water counterparts. It isn't exactly clear why this happens, but it does, and is seen in a few different species, such as those giant shrimps we were talking about last time. It is thought that it may be due to the cold temperatures, which may increase cell size and lifespan, which both may lead to increased body size. Giant isopods are related to wood lice, albeit distant cousins, which is why they look kind of similar. These guys are scavengers who usually wait to collect the scraps of whatever is left over from another predator's meal, whether those leftovers are located on the sea floor or if they're falling from the waters above, like sea snow. Number 10, the frilled shark. This is one of the most stealthy sharks in the sea. This shark is so stealthy that researchers believe that it had been extinct for 80 million years. Little did they know, it's just very good at hiding. The frill shark is a deep sea dwelling creature that was rediscovered in 2015 when two Australian fishermen caught it in their net. Frilled sharks kind of look like an eel, a shark, and a hairbrush kind of had a baby. It has a long, slender body that slithers through the water in a very serpenty way. It earns its name due to the six gills it has on either side that fan out in an unusual way. But the really scary part is how many teeth they have. They have over 300 mini daggers in their mouth angled backwards like hooks so they latch onto their prey, like Velcro. It is one of the few creatures on Earth to be considered a living fossil because it happens to be the only one of its kind. It has no other relatives, which if you're someone who doesn't like their in-laws, not really a bad thing. 
I guess. Number nine, massive amphipods. If you love jumbo shrimp, then oh boy, this would be a treat. Massive amphipods have been found in the trench. They kind of look like massive shrimp, which is a direct result of a phenomenon called giantism. The massive crustaceans can grow to over a foot long in the Challenger Deep, while the ones closest to the surface only reach about three centimeters. The reason they have gotten so large is a part of their strategy to help them survive the immense pressure of being a deep sea survivor. A group of molecules called a piezolite were found and they help stabilize proteins against hydrostatic pressure. This helps them survive and could have a hand in helping them grow to be so large. Number 8. Glass amoebas. In order to live that far down into the ocean, there are going to be three main things that you'll have to overcome. Lack of light, freezing temperatures, and a lot of pressure. Therefore, intense survival skills are required. Scientists were shocked to find foraminifera, a kind of amoeba, surviving down in Mariana's Trench, but with some alterations. This kind of organism is found all over the world, but usually they build hard shells for themselves out of calcium carbonate. Down in the trench, the intense pressures dissolve these minerals, leading them to instead build a kind of glass house. They have adapted to use proteins, organic polymers, and even sand, which is made from silicon dioxide. Dioxide, which forms a kind of pressure proof glass shell. A specific kind of foraminifera called xenophyphores have taken this one step further and glue sand, casts of shells, and microbial skeletons to their feces, which essentially makes a pressure proof shell to live in. Gotta do what you gotta poo, I mean, do. At number seven, we have the deep sea hatchet fish. It got its name because, well, it looks like a silvery swimming hatchet. There are over 40 species of hatchet fish and they can be found at the depths of 5,000 feet. That's just over 1,500 meters. This fish may be tiny, but it does not look that friendly nor welcoming. The deep sea hatchet fish can grow between 2.8 to 12 centimeters long. So while their size and appearance may not be enough to fend off predators, these deep sea fish have evolved to form an ingenious camouflaging technique. They are also like a lot of other deep sea fish because their bodies are bioluminescent meaning they create their own light and can glow in the dark. Their light shines from their stomachs, but no, they do not have any Care Bear powers in case you were wondering. Revealing a silhouette can be dangerous in the deep ocean because of predators, but luckily for the hatchet fish, it can control its light to match the same light in the water. That's the super cool camouflage technique I was talking about. Man, that could be useful. In our number six spot today, we have the anglerfish. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you might recognize these guys. This bony fish is known for its luminescent horn that is used to lure other fish as prey. There are different kinds of angler fish, but those who live in the deep sea are referred to as sea devils, which truly does feel fitting. The females are much larger than the males and can reach up to almost four feet, while the males can reach up to five and a half inches, but these little sea devils are able to eat prey up to the same size as itself. That's crazy! Luckily, most anglerfish remain so deep in the ocean that they are not a threat to humans. And even if they did live not quite so deep in the ocean, most humans would just be too big for them to even try to attack. That sure doesn't mean they aren't crazy to look at though. Just to add a little more about how strange these guys are though, these fish reproduce when the male fuses into the female and lives off of her resources until it can produce sperm. That sounds like a nightmare. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have the frilled shark. As if you weren't terrified enough of sharks, this one looks just as terrifying. Although, now that I see more pictures of it, I can't really take it seriously because it just reminds me of Jerry Seinfeld in the frilly shirt. Anyone else remember that episode? Sorry, Jerry Bear, the shark wore it better. The frilled shark got its name for its six to seven frilled gills on the side of its snake-like body. But that's not the creepiest part of this shark. The frilled shark has a set of 300 razor sharp teeth. They can grow up to 6 feet in size, which is 1.8 meters. Even though this was one of the first deep sea animals to be discovered in the 19th century, it's not the easiest to find. These sharks swim at depths of 16,000 feet, which is around 5,000 meters. However, it is extremely difficult for scientists to study this deep sea creature. They swim at such deep levels that when brought to the surface, they practically die immediately. Due to those reasons, there isn't much known about the habits and life cycles of these sharks but maybe this is just one of those things that is better left unknown. In our number four spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet, like something you'd want as a little pet? Well, think again. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. 
From there, the sponge slowly consumes its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me personally. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have the goblin shark. This shark might just be the creepiest thing on this list. I don't know about you, Olivia, but how did these guys get their names? Well, let's all take a look at the massive goblin-like nose on the front of its face. Yeah, that's how it's got its name. That's how it got its name. It's not really a pretty thing to look at, but at these depths, I don't think there's many people or other fish to impress. These sharks also aren't the usual grayish color. They are instead more of a pink. Not only do these things look absolutely crazy, they are also crazy in size. Goblin sharks can reach lengths up to 18 feet. That's 5.5 meters. You probably won't be swimming near any of them anytime soon anyway though, because they live at depths of 3,000 feet. That's about 915 meters. And the older they get, the deeper they dive. A shark that intentionally swims to its grave. How cute. Same as the filled shark, not much is known about these creatures. They are almost as mysterious and sought after as real goblins. For all we know, goblins are real, and when they get dropped in water, they morph into these crazy looking sharks and keep their distance from the rest of the world. <laughs> I buy it. In our number two spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for the strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead have slippery eel-like skin, which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the anglerfish, these guys have a little lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another, less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach, so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and very talented. And finally, coming in at our number one spot and our weirdest thing found in the Marianas Trench is the zombie worm, aka the bone worm, also also known as the Osidax. But I like zombie worm best. These worms live at the very bottom of the Marianas Trench and the very bottom of the ocean and feed off of bones of dead animals, such as whales. The zombie worm secretes acid to help access the inner contents of the dead bones and it then uses symbiotic bacteria to convert the bones' proteins and fats into nutrients that it then uses as food. The feathery branches on the worm wiggle in the water and they pull in oxygen to keep itself alive. Females grow up to two inches in length while males are microscopic in size. Sorry boys. Females will collect a harem of males on their body and then the males will find their way into the female oviducts. The female then releases her fertilized eggs into the water and the worm's life cycle begins again. That is about all we know about these little ones because they live at such deep depths of our ocean. So until us humans find ways to explore the depths of the Marianas Trench, We'll just have to make do with what we got. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have comb jellies. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures that are named for their unique plates of fused cilia, which are called combs. These combs help the jellies move through the water like boat oars. And while other microscopic organisms also have this sort of mechanism, comb jellies are the largest animal with this feature. These combs are also part of the reason that comb jellies are so gorgeous to look at. Rather than bioluminescence, the rainbow light effect that can sometimes be seen on them is from light diffracting off of the combs in all different directions. Many comb jellies have one pair of tentacles, although they appear to have multiple, but that is just caused by their tentacles branching out. These tentacles are used to help them hunt like a sort of fishing line. Aside from this, these jellies don't sting, which is always a good thing. Not that I'm planning on heading into the deep sea anytime soon. In terms of today's list, I'd say that these guys are one of the less creepy creatures we've got going on. In our number nine spot today, we have the ping pong tree sponge. 
Crunch. Doesn't this name sound so cute and sweet? Like something you'd want as like a little pet? Well, think again. These little things are not what their sweet name would suggest. The name, of course, comes from their appearance as they quite literally look like a little tree that's growing ping pong balls, but those little ping pong balls are where it all starts. The ping pongs have tiny little hook-like extensions that are there to trap any kind of prey that gets too close. From there, the sponge will slowly consume its prey while still alive. This may not be the most vicious creature in all of the deep sea, but it is proof that looks can be very deceiving. Would you have thought that this little thing would be a carnivorous creature? It honestly was a little surprising to me, personally. In our number 8 spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in the dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead slippery eel-like skin which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the angler fish, these guys have a lighted barbel that hangs from its lower jaw to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have a special stomach that will ensure the light cannot be seen from the inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. So while these guys are definitely very creepy to look at, they're also pretty interesting and kinda talented. Number 7, the barrel eye fish. This fish looks like Pixar teamed up with Tim Burton and made this fish up. It looks like an animation floating in the water. Nothing makes sense. Someone once said to me that if you've thought about it, chances are someone's done it or that it exists. I imagine that's untrue for most things, but I've definitely thought about what it could be like to have a see-through body, and this fish brought that thought to life, so who knows. The bear life fish has a head that is entirely see-through. It was originally presumed that they only had tunnel vision because any specimens collected would die before they reached the surface and their head would collapse. But now, scientists are able to confirm that they actually actually rotate their eyes to look up through a fluid filled shield, which is their head, to check out prey above them. They also have fins specifically adapted to allow the creature to hover frozen in place. Their eyes are also designed to capture light just enough to see silhouettes of their prey. So they have really, really incredible eyes. Weird. They look so pretty though. I like them. Number 6, Benthocodone. The thing that fascinates me the most about the creatures in the Mariana Trench is their size and appearance. Why? The water pressure at the bottom of the trench is about 8 tons per square inch, about 60,000 pounds per square inch. You'd think to be able to stand that pressure you'd have to be like Godzilla or something. But that's not the case. It's close to the exact opposite. The Benthocodone is a deep sea jelly that is entirely opaque and floats around in a deep red hue. Pretty delicate and really small. The opaque bell serves as a way of hiding its food in case their bioluminescent lunch signals other predators. It has over 1500 tentacles and despite its little size and delicate flesh, it can survive the immense pressure of the deep. So figure that one out. Number 5, the stout black smelt. This deep sea dweller has also been dubbed the owlfish due to its eyes. In comparison to its body, its eyes are like pretty massive, and we can guess why. The stout black smelt uses its massive eyes to help capture any light it can lay its eyes on. The eyes have cones in them, have like narrow cones that help them suck in as much light as possible, kind of like a vacuum for light. It is a feature they definitely need while they continue to live at depths of over 6,600 meters. Not too much else is known about this little guy, save for the fact it definitely can't stand against a squid. <laughs> Here's a video of this poor fish losing a battle with a squid. Check it out. Owlfish are predators that feed feed on small crustaceans and jellies. They have enormous eyes to help them find their food in the dim light at great depths. Number four, the anglerfish, slash the nope fish. This is the most terrifyingly ugly fish in the world. There are over 200 species of anglerfish that dominate the midnight zone with their terrifying good looks. Each are similar dark brown and gray in color with massive heads and mouths decorated in sharp translucent teeth. The largest species can reach up to 3.3 feet in length or significantly smaller, less than a foot. They they are the horror movie villain of the deep with tricky bioluminescent lures. Thanks to these horrifying creatures, Finding Nemo almost had a grimmer ending. Despite their size, the mouth of the anglerfish is massive and like a python, 
can stretch wide enough to consume prey twice their size. Considering there's absolutely no light, it's cold and lonely, I guess it makes sense that they are a little angry. One can't afford to make friends out of fish when their next meal could be days away, so. Fish aren't friends, they are food. Number three, Dumbo Octopus. Mm, I love it so much. Weird cute is the best combination, okay? Fight me. I'll just show you a picture of this. Meet the only cute thing to live in such a dark place, the Dumbo Octopus. The Dumbo Octopus, as you can guess, resembles Disney's adorable Dumbo Elephant, as it has big fins that look like ears on either side of its head and just like, whoop, flims around. These fins help this floating booby boop steer through currents. They try so hard. While they vary in color and size, they usually reach around 20 to 30 centimeters, so they're really small. While some have also been found to almost reach six feet, so that's like one you can hug. Sadly, you won't come across them in shallow water as these cute water babies are only found around 400 to 4,800 meters below the surface. Since where they live is so dark, they don't need an ink sac to defend themselves, so they don't have one. But honestly, who would want to attack this little guy? Look at those eyes. Puss in Boots can take a seat. Number two, the tripod fish. Can we talk about how this fish looks like they are an alien standing on the moon? Kinda, sorta, yeah? Anyways, yes, that fish is literally standing on the sand. The tripod fish is yet another fish that has adapted in a strange way to live in the deepest, darkest depths of over 6,000 meters. Another tiny but mighty example, it can only grow to about three centimeters long, while its long, bony fins could extend to a meter, allowing it to stand. Researchers estimate that fluid is pumped into them, which allows them to become rigid so they could actually prop themselves up. If you're wondering why they want to be taller, Ask yourself that question the next time you purchase a pair of heels. By standing tall, it's got the best vantage point to capture prey, such as small crustaceans. As they float in the current, the tripod fish can just open their mouths and catch them like snowflakes. However, it is practically blind due to its habitat, so its fins sense vibrations to anticipate predators. So otherwise, it just kind of waits there for food. Number one, last but not least, the Mariana snailfish. Though it doesn't look like it could withstand pressures of a thousand feet below, the Mariana snailfish proves yet again the age old phrase of never judge a book by its cover. Meet the deepest fish in the ocean which thrives at 8,000 feet below sea level. Though they look small, fragile, and slightly translucent, these little guys are actually the top predator at this depth. With few predators, they get the cream of the crop when it comes to food down there. They kind of look like white fat goldfish with a long narrow tail. Its flesh is so translucent you can even see its liver through the skin. Compared to some of the other creatures on this list, it definitely doesn't scream robust survivor, but has adapted in a new clever way scientists are still trying to understand. Mm -hmm.